So I want to give a bit of an update on the coronavirus situation from new data. And this is part of this ongoing idea that we need to keep this evidence based. So we've got some new coronavirus uh, contagion data. Now, if you've watched other videos in this series, you might remember that um, we looked at this graphic here. And this graphic is about the evolution of, of, a, of a condition. So here's the point of infection. Here's when the patient starts to get sick. The green line is the viral numbers as they start to increase. And the purple line is the body's immune response. So I've got a couple of important things we can say about this typical disease progression in relation to new data. Now, this relates to uh, a well-written article in the New England Journal of Medicine on the 30th of January. And let's see if we can, uh, let's see if we can follow this through. <laughs> now, uh, 19th of January, um, a woman arrives in Germany from Shanghai. Now, the first thing to notice is that this woman was not from Wuhan. She was from a completely different city, Shanghai. But of course, Wuhan and Shanghai are only a flight apart. So this woman from Shanghai, businesswoman, arrives in Germany. And she arrives on the 19th of January. And on the 20th and the 21st of January, she meets a man who is 31. And this man is patient one, that she meets this man. Now, there's nothing, nothing salacious here. This is just um, a business meeting. Presumably, there would be a handshake. And presumably, they would be a normal social distance apart from each other. So she meets this woman from Shanghai in Germany. So the woman flies from Germany, meets this man, 33-year-old man, previously fit and well, previously fit and well woman as well. Now, on the 24th of January, the man develops uh, sore throat chills and muscle aches. Myalgia is, my is muscle, algia is related to pain. He just felt he had a sore throat, he was, chills is the feeling cold. Now, when you, when your temperature's going up, that's recognised in your hypothalamus in your brain. And what happens is, the body kind of makes you feel cold, the hypothalamus makes you feel cold to bring up the temperature. So you feel cold. So your temperature, temperature can actually be normal or slightly high, and yet you still feel cold. This is, this is sort of a rigor if, if it's a bad shaky episode and chills so you feel cold it's probably good in fact i'm absolutely certain it's good because um the virus probably doesn't like being at pyrexial that's fevered temperatures and it also increases the efficiency of your own immune system so it's good anyway the man develops sore throat chills and myalgias that's on the 24th of january so that's between so he met the woman suppose he picked, picked the virus up on the 20th he started feeling ill on the 24th so that's a relatively short incubation period of four days. Um, perhaps less than the average incubation period that we've noted on previous uh, videos from the Chinese data. Now the next day, January the 25th, the man had a fever of 31.9 degrees centigrade. That's 102.4 Fahrenheit. And he also developed a productive cough. Quite early in an illness to have a productive cough. Very often the cough is dry and hacky at first. And becomes productive but he had a productive cough on the uh, the 25th of January. Now it doesn't say but if you've got a fever of 39.1 you'll feel absolutely awful. So that, this man must have felt really ill. I imagine he couldn't get out of bed at this stage. Um, now what's interesting here is on the 26th of January he started feeling better. So <clears throat> really he was only ill for two days so 24th to the 26th of January. And he started feeling better. Now, very often, we said that after there's a viral infection, there's a sequelae here. So this purple line was the increase in antibodies, the protective immune proteins. And there's often sequelae. And, and in viral infections, when I've had viral infections, very often I'm absolutely wiped out for weeks afterwards. It takes a good few weeks to recover, sort of post-viral fatigue and post-viral depression. Um, but this doesn't seem to have been the case here because this guy, uh, 
probably must have been pretty tough or something. But he went back to work on, on January the 27th, which is really, really quite amazing. He went back to work. Now, so let's just check that. So he started, he was incubated on the, well, he was presumably infected on the 20th or the 21st. Uh, started feeling ill on the 24th, very sick on the 25th, started feeling better on the 26th, went back to work on the 27th. So very poorly, but for a short period of time. Now, January the 27th, the woman left Germany and started feeling ill on her way home. So she'd arrived in Germany on the 19th. That means she probably picked up the disease on, on the 18th or before. And she wasn't feeling ill until uh, she went home on the 22nd of January. So that's 19, 19, 20, 21, 22. So that's four days. So four or five days, this woman must have been in the incubation period. Now, what we had been wondering about this virus is there's the point of infection. <clears throat> and there's where the per person first starts feeling ill, this red line where you feel ill, ill, iller, iller, most ill, then you start getting better. That point from point of infection up until starting feeling ill is this incubation period. And with SARS, it appeared that people weren't shedding the virus and weren't very infectious during that period. With normal influenza, with seasonal flu, we know that people are infectious during that period. Well, this shows that... This woman was shedding the virus during the incubation period because she started feeling ill on the way home. Now, her illness was brief and nonspecific. Now, what nonspecific illness means is you can't really trace it to part of the body. She just felt ill. She didn't really know why. So presumably she, presumably she didn't have a cough or anything like that. She just felt ill. But she reported to the Chinese authorities and they diagnosed the, uh, the coronavirus infection. And of course, the Chinese authorities realised she had coronavirus and then they informed the colleagues in Germany. Which is why, because otherwise this man in Germany wouldn't have known that he had the coronavirus. He just thought he got ill and got better. Um, so let, let's be clear about what we can say from this. Um, what we can say from this is, uh, we can say an, in some, uh, an asymptomat uh, asymptomatic patient a means without symptoms. So this patient had no symptoms. This woman, this index case, had no patients, um, no, no symptoms. She had no symptoms, but she was shedding the virus during the incubation period. So from this, at least in this patient, she was infectious during the incubation period. Now, from that, we can't say that all patients will be infectious during the incubation period but it looks like they, uh, they might be from this. And there's, there's other data indicates this as well. So asymptomatic patients can spread the virus. And that's bad news for infection because it means people like this woman are feeling fine. I mean, she felt well enough to go from Shanghai and fly to Germany, do business for a few days and then come home and only started feeling ill on the way home. Now, obviously, the German authorities tested the man's uh, colleagues and uh, patient two, patient three and patient four also tested positive. So another three of the man's colleagues. So the initial man, the 33 year old man was patient one, P1, then P2, P3, P4, patient two, three, four also tested positive. And these were business colleagues of the man in Germany. But only P2 had contact with the index woman from China. So that means that P3 and P4 who had contact with P1, probably got the infection from him. Now, this is getting a bit confusing. So let, let's, uh, let's look at this. So what happened was we, we have the, the, index woman from, uh, the index woman from China. Index woman from China. She comes from China, from Shanghai. She's the index. And what's happened is she spread the disease to P1, the 33-year-old man to P1. But she also had contact with uh, P2, patient 2. So it's possible that P2 got the, the, uh, the infection from her as well. That's quite possible. But patients uh, uh, 3 and 4, patients 3 and 4 didn't have contact with the woman. So there was P3 
and P4 in the business environment. And they didn't have meetings with the index woman from China, but they did have contact with patient one, the 33-year-old man. So it looks like those two got the infection from him. And this is very important because what this means is that person-to-person -person spread outside China has now been documented by the New England uh, Journal of Medicine. So a couple of important messages. Index patient here was asymptomatic. So a patient that's feeling well spread the virus to another patient here who presumably was still at work incubating the virus when he infected patients three and patients four. So that tells us something that we didn't know about the spread of this condition. So P3 and P4 had contact with P1. And the other thing that's concerning here is, um, remember that uh, the, the man was went, went back to work on the 27th of January. Um, but he still had a lot of the virus in his sputum on the 29th of January. So this means that the man was still infectious during his convalescent period. So he could have been back at work for two days, spreading the virus, thinking he was better. Um, but he was still uh, infectious. Now, I must say I was surprised by this because normally what happens is the antibodies, which are the immune proteins, increase in number. And up here, the patient will be immune because the antibodies have eradicated the viral infection there. This is the typical pattern. And as we see, the number of viral particles has gone down as the patient starts to feel better. But this wasn't the case. So this green line actually stayed up. This green line stayed up for quite a while afterwards. So the patient still had high viral numbers, even although he was feeling better, even although he had the antibodies. So, so it's actually very strange. But the real world is a strange place. This is what the data showed. So the data shows that, incubate, that uh, incubating patients can be infectious. And it also shows that convalescing patients, surprisingly, still retain the virus and can be uh, infectious. So what this presumably means is that the viral line didn't drop down as the patient started to feel better, but the viral numbers seem to stay up at least for a period of time. Meaning that the patient was still infectious, even although that's the most sick, that's the least sick, even though he was feeling better. So strange, don't pretend to fully understand that by any means, but that's what the data shows, so, so it must be true. Now, the good news is that as of the 24th of January, uh, the four German people, uh, P1 to P4, P1, P2, P3, P4, they've all been isolated, and none of them have developed severe medical illness, which, of course, is good. It looks like they're, they're recovering. But just before we finish this particular video, I think just to balance that, we'll just look at some previous data um, about patients in uh, China. Uh, now, these were patients admittedly who were admitted to hospital in China, so there was somewhat of a self-selecting sample. And we looked at the mortality here in a previous video. But patient one in China, this is actually in Wuhan, was a previously fit 49-year-old woman. Previously fit 49-year-old woman. So not, not, not particularly old. Four days after the onset of illness, her fever reduced. Now, that's kind of what you'd expect. You'd expect is to start feeling better. The fever reduces, she start feeling better because she's making more antibodies. So, so far, so good. So a fever reduced after four days. So her course of illness, it has to be said, was a bit longer than the ones in Germany. She had fever for four days. But her cough and chest infection, her cough, cough and chest discomfort worsened. So after a fever resolved, um, she felt worse. So we could really call this, uh, I don't know if you'd quite call this a sequelae, but it's something that's happening after the acute febrile phase of the illness. And um, she was diagnosed with pneumonia on, on her scan. Um, now, what pneumonia is, is, is you probably know that uh, in the lungs, 
we have these uh, air sacs, the the alveoli. So we have these uh, air sacs here, the alveoli in the lungs. And this is the way that oxygen gets into the blood. And it's the way that carbon dioxide gets from the blood back into the air to be breathed out. Now in pneumonia, there's consolidation. So these fill up with proteinaceous inflammatory fluid. This is the problem in pneumonia, these fill up with fluid. So obviously that means the oxygen can't get through, the carbon dioxide can't get out. And uh, this tends to happen all over the place. It's a, it's a, it's a bronchopneumonia affecting both lungs. Now, as long as the patient's got some healthy areas of lung, where other bits where the alveoli are still uh, nice and hollow, they'll be okay, they can get oxygen in. But if too many get consolidated, filled up with fluid, then obviously they can't get oxygen in, they can't get carbon dioxide out. And that's uh, clearly a life-threatening situation. Um, so this patient did develop pneumonia, was diagnosed by a computer tomography scan. But she did recover, this patient did recover. So that was good. She was treated for the pneumonia and did recover. Now the viral component of the pneumonia, of course, we can't treat. We can't, there's no antiviral drugs. Um, but very often these patients get a secondary bacterial infection as well. So I imagine she was treated for that with antibiotics. So this patient, um, so we've got the four patients in Germany who seem to get a mild illness, the woman who seemed to get a mild illness and they got better, which is great, but with the infectious complications of the incubation period and the, um, the convalescent period, still shedding the virus in the convalescent period, which was concerning. But ju just to uh, remember, um, a 61-year-old man presented with fever and cough, respiratory distress, presumably uh, acute respiratory distress syndrome, developed after seven days. Now, ARDS, acute respiratory distress syndrome, is a bit similar to pneumonia, really. The um, the alveoli filled with inflammatory fluid, but, but it's caused by inflammation. Um, anyway, um, developed after seven days after the onset of illness. So this was seven days after the onset of the illness and worsened over the next two days. Now, he had bilateral fluffy opacities. What, 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 what this means, if you look at a, if you look at a chest x-ray, um, if, you, if you look at a chest x-ray and... Uh, you look at the, these are the lung fields here that's the lung fields there now normally the x-ray should go straight through the air in the lung so it looks white but what he had was fluffy opacities so that that means there was dense areas over both of his lungs like this dark areas over both of his lungs so the x-ray should go straight through if it's just air giving a nice clear picture, but this was darkened. These are o opaque areas. And, and these o areas here are caused by lots of areas of consolidation where there's fluid. So we had this, uh, this, this picture, um, this picture here and um, presented with the accumulator. And he also had fluid in the pleural cavity, a, a hydrothorax. And, uh, and this patient died, unfortunately. So um, what we've got is a picture of one woman and uh, four people in Germany who had mild illness and hopefully are recovering. We, we're, they're still being followed up, of course, um, but we don't know yet. We're, hopefully they're recovering well. But there again, we have other patients who developed pneumonia and recovered and a patient who developed a pneumonia-type condition, respiratory distress, uh, and unfortunately died. So we know a little more about the uh, the uh, in, the contagion of this condition now um, a little more about the contagion of the virus and um, I'm going to do another video on um, on on the spread of this but but just be, just to note here but just on the end of this video uh, the, the, the R naught figure the, the index of spread new data seems to show that's 2.68 and uh, that's higher than we thought so that means this disease seems to be more spreadable more contagious than we thought so we'll review that in more detail in the in the next video